space. Time. What's all that about? You might find out. And I don't know about that. With Jim Jeffries. Space and time. What is all that about? Jack started the song very quickly. We haven't got Luis anymore, so we uh, I uh, I didn't find my words. I was bang straight into it. <laughs> You're the one going, all right, let's go, let's go, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. I'm like a fucking, I'm like a, a director. <laughs> um, We're losing light. <laughs> it's been uh it's been a couple weeks now, Jack, but how did it go with the Ryman? Uh, I wanna first of all say how proud I am of Jack. He did wonderful, he did. He, yep. he did a wonderful bloody job he did. He went out there and they they were very good. And they 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 came out to begin with. There was no one really in the audience. And mm. by the time they finished, the audience was eighty percent full. Mm. And uh they started I saw I saw the gig building. It started off with just background music, the people listening, the people clapping, the people cheering. And it was that was I was very proud of him. People were shouting out like after some lyrics, they go, Woo! Which felt really cool. Mind you, his parents were in the audience doing a lot of those noises. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it was my family. But he also <laughs> played the Bluebird Cafe, which is which is also another huge music venue in that like a uh, historic music venue. Hey, how did that go? That also went great. How yeah. how did you think the the shows went? Just don't say great. Like, give me a synopsis. Uh, of your emotions. I was way less nervous to do the Ryman than I was the Bluebird because it felt like there was like no pressure to do the Ryman gig. Yeah. And also your song, uh, please tell me you're sleeping. Crushed. Oh, yeah. Crushed. Uh, the crushed. Oh, you yeah, wrote yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, we wrote it. Remember, remember, remember he, uh, he. I mean, I remember Jim coming up with it. I didn't know that Jack actually made it into a song. Yeah, and I wrote it. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, because Jim, you Facetimed me. All I want is a special thank you on when that <laughs> when they, on that album. I don't want any money. You Facetimed me, but right. it was it was choppy, so I couldn't watch it. Jim's like, I'll hear the song. That's amazing. It sounds we're really happy with it. We're like, yeah. it came out really well. Yeah. And then Bluebird, like we were like shaking a little bit going up there because it's smaller and it was it's, like it's smaller it was like 90 people you. and everyone before us kept going i can't believe i'm playing the bluebird tonight this is like a dream come true thank you thank you and we're you like, guys are like we just the really out of town is like oh god and then they go these guys played the rhyming yesterday and we're like oh no there's so much pressure <laughs> and everyone in the place turned to us and started clapping we're like oh fuck this is... and, th and that went well too that went well and they, ha they had a songwriter play after us who wrote i'd like to teach the world to sing and some other big songs or some Crystal Gale songs and some John Prine songs. Oh, they must be old as balls. Oh, he was like 82. Um, but oh, he, Oasis ripped that song off. But he, uh, he, he said we were great and we talked to him for a bit. So that was really cool as well. So love yeah, Nashville. That's a huge deal. That city Congrats, is insane. Jack. Thank you. Yeah, Nashville's, a, I always say Nashville's my favorite city, not near the water. I've never been in Nashville. It's on so my I, list. I like to be near the water. Oh, it's, a, it's a bang in Nashville. You got to right. go when you're drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm it's sober fun. right They're, now. It's the, not going to. I mean, it wouldn't be the same. Oh, you it's can't, fun. You, you can't go into a. Yeah, it's fun. But you, yeah, but I'm sober from weed, too. You can't go in. But you can't like you can't go into like a bar and there's bad music. It's like weird. Mm. It's like you just go anywhere. It and started like, at yeah. like 10 a.m. Yeah. There, Every bar on Broadway has a band in it. And it's, there's like 30 bars. I, I, I hate when you, when you go to these places like Vegas and Nashville and then you meet a local and they're like, oh, I never go on the strip. I never go into Broadway. Yeah. Like this, right? Well, the fuck live there. It's awesome. Yeah. These things are awesome. It's like, it's not yeah, you Hollywood. You don't do it every Bo night. You don't do it every night. Yeah. But I, you know, like. It's on Hollywood Boulevard here. Hollywood Boulevard here, there's nothing to do. Yeah. And I remember one time we one time I was there with Jim and, and we went and saw this band and they were called like the Eskimo Brothers or something like that. Mm. Turns out they were like these studio musicians that have been like everybody's album or something. Like, you know, there's amazing musicians. I remember just watching them like this band's one of the best bands I've ever heard. And it was like, and it's just like that everywhere you go. And it's just like it's and just they're fun working times. for fucking tips. Man. Yeah. And that it's us. Yeah, because they're making their money elsewhere. You know, they're just yeah. doing this thing for and th they have good food in Nashville and it's like it's oh, a it's a bang. Amos is walking around going, why don't Australians come here? Because yeah. it's, it's so it's so weird. Like when you when you come from England or Australia or something, you come to America, everyone goes, I'll go to Orlando and I'll go to LA and I'll go to New, New York. York. Yeah. And yeah. They're, they're the places you go. And really Orlando's a big one? Well, Disneyland. Disneyland. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, just to visit, you mean? Yeah. But yeah, but New Orleans is one that one people should go to and Nashville's a city. Both New Orleans cities. and Nashville are two bangers. And the thing about yeah. them is, and I think Nashville's better than or, or, or than New Orleans. It's a little bit more fun, I think. But 
um, the thing about going to those two two places is no one ever sort of thinks about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it like you come to LA? What's there to do? If you live here, you know where to go. You know which restaurants are good. Whatever. You don't have to live in those two cities. They're like Vegas. You mm-hmm. just you, you just walk along and you all go in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll do this. Nashville's definitely yeah. become the new bachelorette party destination. Bachel- oh, yeah, bachelorette yeah, yeah. Yeah. capital crazy. of the world. Yeah. One party stopped me. They said, "Hey, you." We need help finishing these white claws. I said, no problem. <laughs> now, that's when a girl's hitting on you, Jack. Yeah, hey, I'm pretty aware. lady. <laughs> and what yeah. did you do with that? Talk to him for a bit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> bit of progress there. <laughs> Something to work from. And we're like, I was like, oh, I'm playing the rhyme tomorrow. They go, ooh, what's that? I got this big venue over here. Never mind. Just say, I play guitar. I play that's guitar. Saying. Yeah. And Jack bought himself a hat that was fashioned by the hat makers. Yeah, it was custom made. Famous custom hat made. Maker. And then he gave them tickets to my show. And they met me afterwards and they were like this. Uh, we didn't know who you were. We made Jack a hat. We'll take a photo, <laughs> we'll take a photo with you. And I'm like, oh, don't fucking put yourselves out. Is that what they said? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, like, maybe I'm not your cup of tea. But yeah, you know, fucking hell, you, you took the tickets. <laughs> what the we fuck? Even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Jack got his tickets. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, they're, they're these hipsters. I guess we'll make. I guess we'll take a photo. <laughs> Will ya? <laughs> um, you got some shows coming up this week in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, baby. High ticket, ticket alert still. Tickets available. High ticket alert. High ticket alert. <laughs> Tickets available at the door. No, we've actually moved a few. Oh, actually, yeah, talking, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've moved a, a few. That's it's, what happens when you do the alerts. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> high ticket alert. <laughs> like there's still plenty of space. If you're morbidly obese and you think you can't get to comedy, I've got a row for you. <laughs> as long as those armrests lift up. Oh no, you've been. I can tell. Just yeah, looking, yeah, at, yeah. looking at the map, you've been you've been selling some tickets. Yeah, here. yeah. Been moving so some tickets. Act fast. Been moving some tickets. tickets. It tickets. still won't be sold out, but there's going to be a nice no, crowd. No, but it's it's filling up. I can see there. I mean, I, yeah, I can see the Pittsburgh people. sold out, and so we'll uh, see you there next day, October 28th, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh sold out. All right, great. And then, uh, are there any tickets left for November 3rd, Toronto? They. Is the night some the tickets the night before? Not a lot. There's th- that that will sell out, but there's some tickets the night before. Okay, and then uh, then your special. The, the special the tickets are all done. And Vegas, November eighteenth and nineteenth at the Mirage. There's tickets always available uh, at Vegas because uh, unless you get them like two days before, they start sort of a couple of days before. But they always people people with Vegas tickets. It's always like, oh, I'm going to go, and then what can we see and yeah. all that type of stuff. But yeah, it's, I think that's already half sold or something like and that. And Asia, South Korea, Japan. Taiwan, I'm going to be I'm Thailand, Thailand, after Malaysia. this podcast. I'm about to do fucking two hours of Asian press. Oh yeah. Yeah. And when I said fucking Asian, I didn't mean. <laughs> That I meant, the fucking goes towards the press yeah, bit. Yeah. <laughs> There's two adjectives on press. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're gonna yeah. be all over Asia. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta, I gotta do. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be all over Asia. And if you live in Asia, or you're an Asian person who lives in Asia, come and see me. I'll be in Asia. I'm yeah. doing all the towns. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be anywhere you are, if, as long as you don't live in North Korea. I'm yep. not going to North Korea or, oh, China, not, or China. I'm not going to China. I was going to go to China, but China makes me give a script of my dialogue. Mm. Fuck you, China. But I'm close not, enough. I'm not doing that. Look, if you're in China, just uh, skip on over to Taiwan or Singapore. Taiwan, I'll or, be in Taiwan. Or Singapore or, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Just hop, skip, and a jump. They have nothing. No problem with China, Taiwan. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll <laughs> be in Taiwan. Is it Taiwan, China? Just I'll kidding. be in Taiwan yeah, eating at the original Ding Tang Fung. That's what I do. Ding Tai Fung. I, yeah. I, yeah, not the one I go to. <laughs> and I, uh, I go over there and I eat that. And I can eat it here in LA. There's a Better couple there. of restaurants and they've got it in Australia as well. But nah, I've got to eat it at the original. Better there. Better. The food in Taiwan's awesome. The food all over we Asia that, never disappoints. We I, the, I, I'm not a big Korean barbecue guy. I thought the Korean barbecue it was, was, it was yeah. good. But you know, we um, I like kimchi though. We went to that bar in Taiwan too. Remember, it had all those fan, those weird drinks. We went to you had the, the orange thing, right? You were talking uh, about that was in the tower. We had a mango beer slushy too. Yeah, loved it. Yeah, it was good. It was good it was a beer. Just and they shoved a scoop full of mango sorbet in the top. We were 108 stories up. Winner. Yeah. Whoa, that's pretty tall. Taipei, yeah. Taipei Tower or whatever the Taipei. Whatever. Yeah, I I, I would like. I would like to be traveling with my wife to Asia. Yeah, you guys are doing a musical. Well, I, I enjoy my wife's company. It's why I married her. Um, but we were, I, no, I'm saying when we were at the top of that building, you guys were doing a musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We wrote a musical called Taipei. <laughs> <laughs> Taipei, Taipei. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Taipei and Taipei. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was like one of those songs like New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. <laughs> We'd open doors and we'd dance and spin around on the tower. Yeah. Um, but me and the wife, I, I enjoy traveling a bit. I can't, I, we can't do a baby through Asia. No. It's too, it's, it's, too it's, quick. it's not Asia as such. It's just the so many flights. Yeah. And also, it's, yeah. also on this tour, I'm going from freezing to boiling hot. Yeah, that would be a brutal travel <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm crossing the equator all the time, back and forth. Oh, you're freezing again, are you? You'll be <laughs> well, hot tomorrow. Well, the beginning, Seoul, <laughs> Seoul, South Korea will be that'd freezing. Be, that'd be very cold. And uh, Tokyo will be chilly. Taipei will be actually pretty nice. And then we go to Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore. Which will be will wet. Be boiling hot. Yeah, wet. Yeah. <laughs> Bali. Yeah, yeah. Wet. Bali in December. Dem- Holy Dem- hell. It's yeah. going to be some Aloha shirt wearing days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hot. Hot, hot. All right, let's start this podcast. We started it. The, With ads. The, the bit that people enjoy. Let's do the ads. The ads. <laughs> oh, well, and also follow us on Instagram at IDCAT Podcast, and you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash yeah, IDCAT. Well, listen to the Patreon, man. The Patreon's rocking along. Yeah. All right, there's never been a better time to start your own business. And to be your own boss. This, right now is is an even better time to start a business than 2020. Yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah. You can sell anything on the internet. It doesn't matter how obscure your idea is. There is someone out there that will buy it. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes for G, start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you'll create your own online store in your vibe, discover new customers and grow the followings and keep them coming back. Shopify has all the sales channels sorted for your own business so it keeps growing. From an in-person POS system to an all-in-one commerce platform and even across social media platforms like TikTok (laughs) and Facebook (laughs) and Instagram. TikTok. TikTok. I'm a TikToker. <laughs> ah, nice. And thanks to the 24-7 support and free libraries full of educational content, Shopify got you every <laughs> Shopify's got you every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify and you will too. Shopify makes selling simple so you can put yourself and your ideas out there. Whether your thing is making ebooks or earrings, or Shopify makes your success possible. When you're ready to launch your thing into the spotlight, do it with Shopify, the commerce platform backing millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Go to try Shopify for free and start selling anywhere. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Sign up to a free trial at shopify.com slash IDK, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash IDK to start selling online today. That's shopify.com slash IDK. Guys, it's all about confidence when it's time to sex. Am I right? (laughs) And what's a better confidence booster than a fun round with your partner? All courtesy of the chewables from bluechew.com. That's bluechew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form, and it's a fraction of the cost. And now they also have... Vardenful. Vardenafil. Vardenafil. Phil. Vardenafil. <laughs> Vardenufil. Mint flavored chewables. With the active ingredient in La Vitra. La Vitra and Stacnus. Staxon. Staxon. So you can all stay hard and fresh. <laughs> Thinker. Look. You know what it does. <laughs> Blue Chew's tablets help men create harder, stronger erection to combat all forms of ED. That's erectile dysfunction to me and you. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line in the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. Don't like swallowing pills? 
No problem here. Blue tubes. Sildenafil. And. Tadalafil. Tablets are chewable. <laughs> Blue chew tablets are made in the US and they prepare and ship direct. So it's cheaper than the pharmacy. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, la la la, <laughs> visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And don't forget the special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code IDK at checkout and just pay the $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code IDK to receive your first month free. Please welcome our guest, Dr. Kevin Peter Hickerson. Hello, Dr. Kevin Peter Hickerson. Hey, Jim. Now it's time to play. Yes, no. 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 I can't hear it. Judging, Judging a book by, by its cover. I can Clunk. Hear it. Okay. It was that was right. like pretty much spot on. Was I? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> was I in tune? No. no I don't know. No. I can hear it. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll tune it later. This is our first repeat guest. I know, and I'm trying to remember what the last subject was. Uh, moon landing. Ah, oh, yes, the moon landing. I knew it was something. We're talking about that again. We're talking about that again. We're not talking about it again, are we? Yeah. No, Just we're not. Just seeing we're not. what we're you not. remember. <laughs> uh, moon landing. Yeah. When we run out of topics, that's what we should do is just do everything over again. Oh, yeah, It'll be yeah, new material. Right. Okay, so we didn't have it, Kevin here in person. It's very the script. So. Look at Kevin. You're sitting in front of a picture of a Dodge and uh, all of Jack's <laughs> things. Are you Jack? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. So it's a moon landing. So I got to think of something that's that's parallel to the moon landing. I, I, are we talking about walking on Earth? <laughs> There's some walking on Earth involved. <laughs> I don't know if the moon landing is going to help you necessarily. Does it involve engineering? Yes. All right. Um, uh, does it involve mining? Yes. All right. Is it mining? No. Right. Is it diamonds? <laughs> No, no. Uh, I've got a, th a lot of theories on diamonds. I want to talk about <laughs> diamonds. I don't understand why they fucking cost so much. They last forever. There should be too many of them on Earth. Oh, we, we should just be handing them down. Yeah. Why does every woman want a brand new diamond? What's wrong with the old ones? They're exactly the same as when they were first. And where are they going? Where are they going? Save, save this. I, we pro keep I, I promise I'm working on a diamond expert. We keep expert. producing diamonds, yet I, the, the, they're scarce. They should be everywhere. Okay, so mining. <laughs> um, mining, you're onto something with mining. You you mine something, and then once you mine it, oh, you if need it's it. it's fucking Bitcoin again, I'm walking out no, right no, now. No, 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 no. You mine something, and then once you mine it, you'll use it to do to make this. Your business. You'll you you'll mine. Some, is it gasoline? Close. It got. It, it, it's yeah. It, All right. Tell me then. Because <laughs> if it's close to gasoline, I, I got, I, I've got a, I've got a hint for you. Okay. Homer Homer Simpson. Ooh, Homer Simpson. It's donuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get, you Homer don't. Simpson mining gasoline. I said you're close with gasoline. Oh, nuclear power. There you go. The problem okay. is I can't say nuclear right. I think I say it wrong. How do you, and uh, when yeah, people say it the nuclear. other way, nuclear. Nuclear. Yeah. Nuclear. nuclear. Yeah. Nuclear, but a lot of people nuclear. say nuclear. My, my nuclear. first day, of, I was saying it right. Yeah. My first day of college, I learned this because somebody said, "You say the word new, and then you say the word clear," mm. and I never said it wrong after there that. Nuclear, <laughs> nuclear. Uh, Doctor Kevin Peter Hickerson is a nuclear physicist <laughs> <laughs> who was part of the team that broke That's the something. Isn't it? <laughs> That's something. <laughs> Yeah, I see you're a married man. Wait, I'm not right? done with this intro, honestly. I wish you, you wish you weren't sometimes. So you could, go, <laughs> you could go into bars and just go, I'm a nuclear physicist. And then she goes, nuclear? And you go, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he is part of the team that broke the world record for the best neutron lifetime measurement. Yeah, that's not hard. <laughs> and I know exactly what that means. Yeah, I don't know either. You can explain to us in a second. He is also a comedian and host of the Science and Comedy Podcast, Surely you're joking, created with Jimmy O. Yang, our friend, yeah. uh, featuring Nobel Prize winners, scientists, and comedians. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram at KP Hickerson. Um, what does that mean, best neutron lifetime measurement? Are you asking me? No, I'm asking. I'm asking. <laughs> we can call you Kevin, right? Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. It's yeah, easy. So, it's better than the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> so when you, when you free a new, uh, neutron from the nucleus. Whoa, you guys slow that. down, college boy. <laughs> <laughs> so all matter is made of protons and neutrons and electrons. You uh -huh. can free the neutron, but it only lasts about 15 minutes. And because it's so long and not so short, you know, it's, it's actually 
hard to measure. And, and so the way we did is we froze them and put it in a bottle. And this method ended up being a much more accurate version than the previous attempts, which didn't do that. So, mm. um, and we got three times better accuracy than the, even the previous record. What kind of bottle do you put in it? A magnetic bottle. Okay. My favorite. You said a bottle. I just, I, that's what I meant. Mountain Dew Code Red. <laughs> a, a very expensive magnetic bottle. A Mexican Coke bottle. <laughs> That's the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, we're going to ask Jim a bunch of questions about nuclear power. Yeah. and uh, No idea. Ask me what a proton is. No idea. I, I don't even <laughs> going to ask you about what a proton is. But, no, um, thank God. And then uh, and then at the end, you're going to grade him on his accuracy. Zero through 10, 10 is the best. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. We'll add those all together. Um, uh, zero through 10, white power. It's not good. You don't want to have that. 11 through 20, power puff girls. Mm -hmm. 21 through 30, he-man. You know why? Why? What did he say? Oh, uh, I have the power. But how did he say it? I have the power. There you go. <laughs> I, I, look, even I'm a, a He-Man guy. Even though I feel like Powerpuff Girls was better. But. I'm a, I'm a He-Man guy. I was right in there. I, like I love that Girls. shit. All right. Um, what is nuclear power? It's, uh, it's a, f a form of electricity that's caused by protons and neurons and all that type of stuff. Uh, from, yeah, times. from uranium being dug up from the ground, and it is a clean source of energy, uh, and it has a bad name, and it should rebrand itself and not call itself nuclear power. What, does it, what should they call it? Ah, oh, just fucking clean, no, no boom boom power. You know, because I mean? <laughs> everyone well, everyone worries that it's going to cause trouble. Probably the Simpsons have, have taught us that, and then you have things like. An earthquake in Japan, and then they have nuclear fallout and stuff like that. Like in Australia, we have so much uranium that's going unmined. There is an argument that we should be running on nuclear power completely in Australia, but we don't do it because people are adverse to the word. Okay. How does it work? How does nuclear power work? You put things in bottles, yeah. little magnetic <laughs> bottles, and yeah. you shake them up and they go, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> And then, and then you, you can wire up to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, is it, I, I don't think it's anything because splitting the atom is it makes the hydrogen bomb, which <laughs> is a nuclear. I don't know. Oh, there's there's atoms. Let's move on. Uh, what is <laughs> what is nuclear fission? What nuclear fission? Nuclear vision is fission. is a fission with an my F. optometrist with a new with lens. An F. F. <laughs> Just move fission. on, Boris. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. What is a control you rod? You act so fucking smart over I, there on I your computer. I, I I know a little bit about, it, but I don't know. All that. What yeah. is a control rod? It's that it's that that glowy stick at the beginning of The Simpsons that pops <laughs> off the thing and then lands in the back of his jacket. Might be. Um, I think it is. What is yellow cake? Uh, that would be poppy seeds, lemon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where does uranium come from? The ground. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's mined from the ground, my friend. What is enriched uranium? Uh, that's uranium where they put fertilizer on top of it. Okay. <laughs> Dynamic lifter, which is just chicken shit, you know. Okay. <laughs> what happens when with the waste generated from nuclear power? You put them in barrels. And you dig them under the ground and you hope no one finds them. That's historically <laughs> what's happened. That, well, there is. I don't think it ever goes away. I think that's one of the problems is they find it hard to get rid of. That's why there's the three-eyed fish, man, in The Simpsons. <laughs> um, who was the first to develop nuclear power? The Turkish. Okay. They never get credit for it. Well, <laughs> they were the first, but they didn't have computers, so they couldn't, they couldn't tell anyone they've done it. And, and then it was ripped off by the Italians. And what was it used for? <laughs> Uh, what was the first? Oh, uh, make DeLoreans work in the eighties. Okay, <laughs> you're killing us. Uh, when was the first nuclear power plant built? Okay, so we know like, okay, so would have I think it would have been in Europe somewhere. Mm. I, I think I, I don't know. Maybe it was in. I, I I'm going to say. Uh, Austria, mm. and and uh, how many? It wouldn't been Chernobyl. Maybe it was Chernobyl because that one was just so old. Wait, yeah. wasn't that question when? When? Oh, yeah. when? Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> when? Uh, <laughs> Austria. Uh, nine, <laughs> 1940. 
Okay, and how many nuclear power plants are there in the world? Oh, hundreds. I'm going to go 200. 200. And how much power worldwide uh, do these supply, like, of the worldwide power? Uh, 15%. What is advanced nuclear? Uh, that's the one where they know they get rid of the waste and wow. they, 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 they've got better systems. They put a Brita filter at the bottom of one of those big stacks. <laughs> got to change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it's still all right. You can the, the, That Brita filter racket, <laughs> it doesn't need to be changed that often. No? No, they changed it to Has anyone else pissed into a Brita and then tried to drink it? No, but- Me neither. There's a, there's a trend going around where people are pouring alcohol into the Brita and, and filtering it that way, and they say it just tastes like water, and it's probably very dangerous because people are getting really fucked up. Wait. So there's an idea there's for a, you, kids. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did that life hack a while ago. Oh, yeah. did you? I think so. Did you? I think Turns so. out we don't listen when you do that segment. Shocker. <laughs> uh, okay. How much waste is produced by nuclear power? What, per cubic foot? Like, uh, I'll let's just say like with a power plant, just one power plant. Does it produce? One power plant yeah. produces enough nuclear waste per year to fill a... Volkswagen Beetle. Okay. That's not a lot. I was going to do a stadium and then I thought, hmm, they've been going forever. If it was a stadium each time, it'd be full. It's like my thing. Everything's measured in this, the Amazon stadium <laughs> a day. Everything's measured in fucking stadiums. And you said it's clean, so the environmental impact of nuclear power is not as bad as we think? I, don't, I believe it is clean energy, yeah. Okay. What are radioisotope thermoelectric generators? Uh, they're the, what uh, converts the uranium into nuclear power. Okay. And then just last question. You said Chernobyl. Any other accidents, you know? Any other? Chernobyl. And then there was the one, the earthquake in, in Japan. Remember the name or? Uh, no, but I remember I did a whole bit on on like that was when around the time that Bin Laden was thrown in the water. And yeah. then the thing, and I was like, that's how you make super villains. That's yeah. an origin story. <laughs> Nuclear waste. You wait. We've got a fucking Godzilla bin Laden coming our way. Are there any famous ones from the US? Uh, uh, the small town on the border, Del Taco, mm. also had one. The Del Taco one? It's a, No, it's not, not the restaurant, the town. Oh. I didn't know that one. Yeah. Okay, Kevin, how did Jim do on his knowledge of nuclear power? Zero through 10, 10 the best. Very well, good. Well, those are pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> a lot ten of on, points for- 10 on comedy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, those are funnier answers than the, the moon landing one. So that was yeah, great. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Moving on up. Um, some were great. I was I was really impressed. Some in the beginning and a few in the, in, in, towards the end. Um, but some were were not so great. Yeah. Um, so I'd say like a six. Six. A six. Wow, that's six. a really good score. Too high. Is much better. I, <laughs> I crushed poker the other day and got a two. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he got bonus points for saying it was clean. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah, clean. I think I think he liked that you said it was clean. How about confidence? Um, I'm going to give him a, a, a three on confidence, That's but nine. agreed. Did like the answer. It's very funny. That's a nine. Well, it's, it's look. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't expect you. It's to, one I, of these things that you only know once you know. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't there's know, no reason you should know a lot there's, about there's this. Nothing, there's no jeopardy questions yeah. here. No, yeah. None of this is going <laughs> to help you in your act. Well, maybe yeah, we'll maybe. find out. You can do a chunk. <laughs> do a chunk. Yeah. Okay. You got nine total. I'm going to give you 20. So you're He-Man. I have the power. I, I, used, to, I used to love He Man. Yeah. Fuck, I loved He Man. Yeah. And then it's like, like Jason Whitehead's like, I didn't like him as much. And I was like, they came out when I was like seven, yeah. and when he was eleven. Of course, you didn't like it much. You you would have been a simpleton <laughs> playing with He Man at eleven. <laughs> Is wife, he four my, years older than you? I think so. Yeah. Damn. My wife's a huge He Man fan, and it's it's like a lot to live up to. It's like how, I can't, how, can't. how old is your wife? Uh, she's a couple of years younger than me. How old are you? I'm 46. 46. I okay. know. Oh, no, that's that's yeah. That's right. Because yeah, I'm 45. That's the right age for He-Man. Mm-hmm. That's right. And bang smack in the middle. Yeah, of- but women generally weren't He-Man fans. That's right? why they like, brought out Shira. Gem, no, Gem, Gem was around at the time. But Gem she was. was it is, it, like no, I said, Shira. It's- Shira came okay, yeah. in to help out. Maybe she was just a horny kid. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wouldn't you ever? <laughs> they had that one He-Man that smelt really bad. They had to shut the factory down because everyone was getting toxic. Fucking. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't like a B.O. in the cartoon. It was the actual toy. Yeah, the, that? The, toy okay. the toy was like a skunk. Like every, every He-Man had a different ability. It started uh, off with just He-Man was a regular doll. 
Then man at arms, uh, his arms went swing down like uh -huh. this to make a punch. And then you had ones that could squirt water out, ones with suction cups on them, whatever they could do with a doll to make something, do something different. And then one of them just stank. <laughs> and it's a superpower. Yeah, the, the, the stinky <laughs> one. The, away. the stinky one in the factory. They were making it, and there was too many employees just coming home with headaches and shit. <laughs> that's that's, that's wild. crazy. <laughs> All right. So, what is nuclear power? Uh, Jim said it's formed by protons and neurons. <laughs> Protons right. so and neurons and uranium yeah. dug up from the ground. So I think he meant neutrons. Neutrons, like that's yeah. <laughs> neutrons are very important to nuclear yeah. power because they're the, they're sort of like the catalyst that makes it happen. Mm -hmm. That protons they're mostly there for the ride. Um, and he correctly said it's mostly made to to make electricity. Although you can do other things with it, but that's its main point: is you you generate heat and then you boil water and you run a turbine and you, the turbine. Turns a generator and you get electricity and you power it. See, I don't think a lot of people know that. So I think, uh, so you, you, you make the heat to boil water to make steam mm -hmm. and that spins the turbine, oh. which makes the electricity. Why can't we just do that with a Bunsen burner? Uh, you can. And there's yeah, lots of, that's a natural it. gas uh, turbine. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Lots of those. That's right. That's what <laughs> that's that actually is. Like kind of the big competitor with, uh, <laughs> with nuclear power. You need a fuel. That's, yeah. that's, how, it feels, yeah. Yeah, that's how it does it. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about his idea for the new name, Clean O Boom Boom Power? I love it. Yeah, I, love, I, think, I definitely think it bring needs to Bring that back to your people. Yeah, no, wait, clean No Boom Boom Power. <laughs> yeah, Clean oh, No Boom Boom. I thought boom, it was Clean O. No, No Boom Boom. So no blowing up. I don't know. I like I like Clean O. Because, okay, so so when you have like a nuclear uh submarine so i understand so how's that happening so they're heating the thing to make the submarine is that how the submarine gets its energy or yeah exact same way they have a turbine on board and, and so they're they, heating up the new and so and so yeah. people people are very adverse to them because they're worried they might crash oh it's the same way it's a it's it's heating up yeah, it's and hitting spinning a turbine. a turbine um the reason you don't need steam coming out is because they're in the ocean so it just dumps the heat back into the ocean it's pretty oh, easy wow. yeah because when you see the at at, at Nuclear power plants, the, what you see being emitted is steam, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. all steam. Yeah. Oh, so that's yeah. not toxic because that there's always no looks like, oh, God. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing toxic mm. coming out of it. All right. It's, it's not like even, a vape. It's not Giant even connected vape. to the reactor. <laughs> nothing coming out of that, uh, out of the out of the, uh, the the steam coming out. Nothing, none of it is in direct contact with any uranium or anything like that. Yeah. And was I right about what I said about Australia, that they have tons of uranium and there's been a big pushback? Because I've, yes. I've heard this yes. argument on different talk shows or different radio shows and stuff like that. And uh, I, it's always one that I've said that we could do it in Australia. We have the, the ability to do it, but they won't do it because of the name or is that just a bit? I don't think it's because of the name. Uh, I think there's another one. I don't want to get conspiratorial, but Australia is a major coal exporter. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you got a lot of uranium and you have a lot of coal and a lot of people buy coal. And I think that's... Well, Might not just export it. We we use, use it, it in, yeah. in Australia. Yeah. We have we have coal you, mines near the Great Barrier Reef. We won't make as much money from the uranium as they're they're, yeah. they're bringing yeah. boats over. People are very pro coal. Not everybody. I know we're going to be. We're not pro coal in Australia. You fucking. Blah. But no, there's a lot of people who are pro coal over there, and then and then I think they use scare tactics when I say they're afraid of the word. They use scare tactics for the nuclear power. Yeah, absolutely. So wait, so how does it work? So that's an expert. How does it work then? So you. You use uranium, but like, how does it? I don't. I mean, well, well just quick, quickly yeah. before that. So, so if coal, if we have a finite amount of coal, and mining coal is a bad thing for the world, why is it? Why is it better to rain to to mine uranium? Like, is uranium? Do we have a finite amount of uranium, and that that's also a problem? Or uh, there is, is a finite amount of uranium, but the big difference is the the ratio of the density. So, mm -hmm. um, I'll show you this a little later, but I'll I'll give you a hint now. Which is uh, you can say it now if, you, if there's, it makes there's, sense. Yeah. Well, there, the energy in uranium is about a million times denser than the energy mm -hmm. in coal. So for about a million tons of of coal, you could with the same with one ton of uranium, you could get the wow. same energy. Or a million to one. Yeah, that's ah, crazy. And good. that doesn't just make it uh, better from a mining point of view. That makes it better from everything. The plant doesn't have to be as big. The the overhead into the environment doesn't have to be as big. You don't. A you're not. You're not building one. these giant pits where you're you're pulling coal out. And even even more interesting is there's actually about one part per million of uranium in coal. So when you burn coal, you actually release natural uranium into the air, more uranium than is ever released from a nuclear power plant. So coal actually causes the release of more radioactive material than a nuclear power plant. Is there, so that would, I, I, 
So that would mean there is less money in mining uranium because you would have, or, the, or there's the, just as much money and you would have less employees and all, all that. Type there's of definitely very little money in mining uranium. So another thing is, even though we did mine it originally, very little uranium needs to be mined nowadays. In fact, most of it has already been mined. A lot of it was mined during the, uh, the during the Cold War for the weapons program of various countries, or just because people thought it. They, I think they thought it was more of the future than it turned out to be at the time. So there's most countries have really large stockpiles of your oh, so we have plenty uranium. of it just sitting around we have tons of it already mined uh and also oh this is doing my head in already yeah. so we're still digging up the ground for fucking coal and we have this shit just sitting in our garage yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. and yeah. even more exciting is uh uranium unlike coal uh is even dissolved in the ocean and so there's scientists who even figure out how to extract uranium just from and pulling it out of sea wire yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't, we don't do that yet because we don't need to, but you know, there's, so have enough right there's now. thousands, if not millions of I might of years sound very stupid. Of, uh, like actually, I know what coal looks like. Uh -huh. I've seen coal. What does uranium look like? I was just looking that up. <laughs> it looks like metal. <laughs> it's kind of boring. looks like a metal. Uh, it's just, just, well, just, one of the questions was I was like about wondering that. what form. Can I jump ahead? Yeah, you can jump ahead and back Yeah, so one of the questions was what's yellow cake? Okay, so yellow cake is one of the forms of, it's sort of halfway between when you get the uranium out and when you get uranium ore, it's halfway in between. It's uranium oxide and it looks bright yellow. That's why it's called yellow cake because it's yellow. It's it's yellow and fluffy and it, it looks delicious, but I, I don't think you should eat it. Yeah. Right, Sounds right. like something you buy as a drug too. Mm -hmm. yeah, does, yeah. Yeah. You got that yellow cake. <laughs> be like, yeah, bro. Sounds like a derogatory yeah. slur to me. <laughs> <laughs> but everything does. Yeah. So if you if you go from one country where it's mined and then you want to export it to a nuclear power country country or something like that, usually it's transferred in the form of of yellow cake. Sounds like something a cowboy would say to a bloke who doesn't want to fight him. <laughs> like what hey, are you, hey, yellow, cake? yellow cake it's like an effeminate guy he's a coward <laughs> um i know that people listening to this podcast and some people people will get upset about uh, even talking about nuclear power because they'll say oh well i mean if you want to talk about being cleaner than coal and safer than coal obviously but then people will talk about renewable energy like solar wind things like that and mm -hmm. obviously those have their drawbacks too so yeah, but you got to have things in conjunction with. So yeah. we're not going to one day just turn off the coal switch and then go, yeah. it'll be a gradual thing. Sure. So why, while we're doing this gradual thing, why don't we fix to the cleaner, less mining, less holes in the ground option? Yeah, yeah. And this was pretty important to me because- uh, Is it cheaper? Is it cheaper for us as a as the public? It is cheaper, yes. And yeah. people will argue about that too, but uh, it absolutely is cheaper. And you can see that from it being done on the ground, electricity is much cheaper in France than it is in Italy, for example. Italy, nuclear is banned. France, they have almost all nuclear power plants there. Oh, France I, is like big into it? Yeah, France is into it. Japan is into it. That was uh, that thing where, where Homer Simpson does his prayer before food and he goes, I like the blessed nuclear power, <laughs> which is the best source of energy. Not like that pipe dream, solar. <laughs> <laughs> so this was pretty big to me because I actually used to work in the solar industry yeah. Uh, yeah. before I went back to grad school. And while I was really excited about it, um, there's a lot of things that are very frustrating. Like it consumes a lot of land and a lot of side resources. Right. And the panels do not have not really gotten much cheaper. They've they've mm. got they look like they've gotten cheaper, but they kind of reached a flat line. And you still have to wire them up, and you have to. Uh, it just it yeah. takes up uh, a lot of resources yeah, on the side. That was a huge problem. Ke I Kelly worked in solar, solar too, and it's just like the the amount of roof space that people have. It's like so many people have such high electricity bills, but can't get systems that are big enough to cover that. And it's uh -huh. like at that point, is it worth it? it like. Yeah, yeah and, and imagine you live in hurdles. New York or something. Yeah. Your roof space is shared by like like totally. 10,000 other people in your apartment yeah, building. Yeah, but <laughs> but like Jim was saying too, there's a whole balance there too. If you yeah, live, if you live in the desert or in LA or something like that, you got roof space. Yep. then you can do it, then you should do it. And then yeah. then you have this balance of- you That's another reason why uh, Australia is probably one of the the most anti-nuclear of the uh, like the developed country, or the, the advanced countries. There's a lot of solar there, yeah. Yeah, they have tons of solar there. I know so, when you fly in, you see people. solar everywhere. And I've yeah. got hydro at my house, yeah. electricity. You got a dam? No, just there's a duck on a chain swimming around my pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he goes around and around, and he works a turbine underneath. And <laughs> That power is a small light in my house. Nice. Arnie, stop bothering him. All right. Um, what is nuclear fission? 
Okay, this one you got wrong. No, I, got, <laughs> I think I, you passed all that. Well. I I'm said not sure. moving on. So, <laughs> <all that>. yeah. <laughs> so fission is the main thing that works in a in a current nuclear power plant. Um, what powers the sun is called fusion. So those are the two types of nuclear power. There's fusion and fission. To date, we have not gotten a power plant to work with fusion. There's a lot of people trying. We've been trying for a long time. I hope that happens. What, what does that mean, though? Like, okay, I'm mean, going to get to that. So yeah. fission is when you take a, a large atom and you split it in half and you release neutrons and energy. And it, you get a chain reaction and it keeps going because those neutrons then cause that to happen to another atom. And so you can you can cause it to happen over and over. Fusion is a little different. It takes a lot of heat and pressure to get fusion to work because atoms don't like running into each other because they they're charged. So they they try to repel each other. But if you get enough heat and pressure, then they eventually do stick together. They make a heavier atom. This is what powers the sun. The mm -hmm. problem is the sun is giant. And mm. we don't have that it's much gravity big, on Earth. So we're big. trying to do it with magnetic fields or lasers or even sometimes uh, physical pressure waves. There's a lot of different techniques that people are trying. None of them work at the moment. I yeah. mean, they, they don't work for more than a few seconds at most. Is it more efficient than, say, if we just got a whole lot of orphans to ride bikes in a warehouse? Uh, they, they're probably about the same. Okay. <laughs> I, I was walking through the Golden Gate Park in, in San Francisco one time, and there was like a, a concert that they were playing and it was being powered by people on bikes. They had, they, they had, oh, all, these, yeah. they had all these yeah. stationary bikes. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Oh, they wow. did a Grateful Dead show. These people died. <laughs> <laughs> it was like all these stationary bikes and people were like, Z -Z 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 -Z, and they had the, and then uh, as we were walking by it, um, some guy was like, I'm tired. I need to get off the bike and someone else get on it. And it was like people, like nobody was like tapping out. Like with the guy, I was like, this isn't a great plan. Like the, the, the PA system's about to shut off. But. So we got these disasters and Forrest is about to bring him, bring him up, right? You know, well, Chernobyl's some, some point, and, yeah. and whatnot. We can jump to him. Yeah, Chernobyl's and whatnot. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so you understand why people are worried because these things have happened. How, how do you stop these things from happening? Yeah, so they, they should they can be, jump all around. It doesn't it's definitely yeah, not yeah. something to ignore. And uh, nuclear physicists like me, uh, we don't ignore it. We don't pretend it didn't happen. Um, but there's a lot of caveats that are pretty important. Arnie. <laughs> so <here>. chill. <laughs> Come here. There's a lot of caveats. So, Sorry. Uh, I like so you better when a dog was licking your balls. <laughs> You seemed a lot more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have put the peanut butter on. I mean, he's not being, I just, he's just, I don't want you to, so you to bother him. It's also, sometimes they've been exaggerated <laughs> quite a lot. So like Three Mile Island, a lot of people thought it was this enormous disaster. And well, there it was, was only a, three miles. <laughs> that, that's the one, that's the one well, in the U.S. Yeah, right? that's that, the one in the U.S. It caused a lot of people to be really scared of it. There was a meltdown. Meltdowns are bad. But virtually no radioactivity was released because it was all inside a containment vessel. And yet a lot of people think that it was spewing stuff all over. That didn't happen. That did happen in Chernobyl. But again, there's a caveat. You mentioned that as an old reactor. It absolutely is. We're going to talk about advanced nuclear later. But Chernobyl is what's called a Gen 1 reactor. That means the very first type of reactor we ever built. They didn't have containment vessels. Its purpose wasn't even really to make uh, power originally. It was more related to the uh, Soviet Union weapons program. Mm. And it had a lot of uh, you know organizational and safety uh, issues behind the scene and they're fighting over that land right now yeah like, why <laughs> let it be oh in the ukraine yeah yeah, yeah. 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 it's Chernobyl's always in the ukraine right it's just over the border or is it in russia it's like it's part of where they're fighting in that area yeah yeah, yeah. it's it yeah. like the, like i know they're fighting. it's on the border right yeah ukraine right. is near the border but some of the explosion zone is in uh russia in, in belarus and some of it's in yeah ukraine. And so Three Mile Island, none of it got out. Like, because I remember that was when I'm trying to see. Yeah, it was 1979. It I was little. No, none of it got and, out. No one yeah. died. No one was hurt. And yeah. yet it, it created just incredible. Forrest fear. lived right there. there. He was two <laughs> at the time. He was about four at the time. He was in Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> he used to be a very thin girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like, when it happened. In my head, I was just like, oh my God. Like, what are we, yeah, just think, like freaking out about it because that's what they meant. And, and again, the same with Fukushima. Uh, no one died from the accident. There were a few people who died from the evacuation, but that also happened right. in other areas that were evacuated. But there were animals that died, right, in the ocean and stuff like that, I think. Well, uh, not that I know of. Also, oh, uh, you've got to make the plants less unsightly. You've got to work on that. Paint, yeah. paint them. Put a mural on the side of the big cylinders. But even... Uh, Spruce it up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Write the word love or something. <laughs> Put angel wings on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it Instagrammable. <laughs> paint it like a volcano. 
put, oh, put paper yeah. mache mm-hmm. around the outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bit of fun. <laughs> but even uh, Fukushima was a Gen 2 reactor. It was a one built, designed right after the type that was in Chernobyl. Um, we're now entering Gen 4 reactors. So that's uh, all the reactors we want to build now on. So the, you're saying they're like Gen iPhones, like they, you, you know, they're just designed to break down after a few years. So yeah. you try another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one takes great pictures. Well, it's it's kind of like saying, but this Nokia sucks. Why would I want an iPhone? You know, it's just like, okay, but it's a flip phone from, uh, you know, 94. Yeah. You know, so well, how often should these things be replaced? Because you think once you build one of these big things, it, is, it probably costs a billion dollars to build a plan or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, but in addition to uh, the design, uh, also a lot of them get upgraded when we learn about what's what needs to be fixed, you know, like from an accident, but also just as people learn more and more about making it safer and safer, they can do things where they upgrade an old plant. Um, and uh, that matters a lot because like, for example, in Three Mile Island, the accident was completely avoidable. And unfortunately, it was just bad management that caused that even that accident to happen. But we'll but, always have human error. That's true. So that, and that's important. So a lot of the design is to make sure that human error is less involved, less capable of causing a problem. What? So, for example, in, in uh, when we since we're going to talk about advanced nuclear, in advanced nuclear, a, a really exciting thing that they're doing now with uh, reactors is they're trying to make sure that even if everyone has to leave, let's say there's you know there's a there's a disaster or something and humans can't be there, they want the plant itself to be safe. So that's called walk away safe. And a lot of the new types of reactors are that way. And that hasn't happened with all the previous generations. They've always had some backup generator or they need someone to go close a valve or something like that. And even though you can you can take that into account and you can say, let's make sure we have a backup generator, that we don't even want that to be a thing that can go wrong. We want the reactor design itself to sit there. And even if the, you know, the worst thing happens and no one's there to run it, or maybe, you know, like hijackers take over the plant or something, you want it so that it still uh, is basically can't have a problem all right oh hijackers didn't even think about hijackers so okay i got a two-part question right so how do meltdowns happen second of all does every plant have a red light that goes (laughs) is that the sound uh yes every plant has that (laughs) absolutely who's in charge of replacing those bulbs (laughs) well there's a little speaker too yeah yeah (laughs) i get that make sure that you definitely have to have alarms those are important um so uh, a meltdown happens when, um, th- so, so fission is a chain reaction, as I mentioned before, meaning like it's, it's like, a, it's a lot like a fire that's burning. Mm. So except in the case, instead of like heat from the fire, it's neutrons that then give off heat. So what, what happens with the meltdown is um, this chain reaction gets out of control, meaning the, the number of neutrons being made is way too fast there are too many of them being made quickly and they they kind of grow exponentially and you to get a nice reaction you have to have it stable now they can't blow up the way a bomb does that that's also a common misconception plants can melt down but they can't blow up they can't just magically turn into a fission bomb they 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 simply don't have enough uh enriched uranium in them to do that and that's not an accident that's completely on purpose people don't want a, a reactor to be just a bomb waiting to happen. I mean, but, I have a meltdown like once a week. I feel like they're getting a bad <laughs> reputation. Yeah. 1979 was the last meltdown. Yeah. <laughs> Three Mile Island. And I well, always, I always hear meltdown. like uh, about a, a crack in the reactor. Is that something or is that movies? Uh, well, that can that would be bad, but yeah, well, <laughs> that's it, a thing. It seems like a lot of problem areas. <laughs> well, there's tons, but yeah. there's also things designed to prevent it. So, for example, I mentioned the containment vessel on the outside. That's to prevent things like a crack. If there's a crack, the worst case scenario, you want it to only fill the containment. So you vessel have like a little, con- like a metal thing around it. Yeah, there's a, me- a metal steel and then you vessel. Have, what if that one cracks after that one cracks? It would be very unfortunate. And so you rush and dole it out. <laughs> so that you keep on going containment yeah. vessel, containment vessel, containment vessel, and then like by the time you get into the nuclear power plant, it's like the opening scene from Get Smart. <laughs> <laughs> This is some deep cuts for some young people who are watching this. <laughs> no, I got it. I'm following. <laughs> I love Get Smart. It's good. Yeah, I love bring, that too. bring that back. Not so, the movie. So I mentioned the density of coal and gasoline compared to nuclear. So this is uh, uh, a cocaine this. vial. Yeah, <laughs> I've had these. That's, I, I, that's I, why it was so cheap on I'm, Amazon. I've now got I these kicking it. around my house. Okay. <laughs> So Wait, in, what's this? So inside of there, uh, you can pass. Oh, if I open so, it up, am I all right? Uh, I, I, it'll probably spill. So try not. Oh, it's got, <laughs> it's got some in it. Yeah, look inside. 
Wait, what's in there? What? Yeah, it's not it's empty. Those no, there's little pebbles at the bottom, little pellets. Oh yeah, that is how much uranium, uh, enriched uranium, you need. You could drive. Uh, that's that is the same energy enough for you to drive a car across the country. What? And it costs one dollar. Really? Yeah. And that's safe in that vial. Uh, well, it's not actually uranium. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the size of uranium. a few fucking pepper kernels, and I was holding it like I had something. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Didn't actually bring your yeah, yeah. I, That's why I was like, wait, you just talked about all these different chambers and vessels. You're like, hey, here we go. <laughs> right, I was going to snort it for a bit. <laughs> There'd be a guy with a machine gun here. Yeah. That was actually uranium. Um, that's mind blowing. So wait, can I just dig up uranium in the, my backyard then? Uh, like you're saying a guy with a machine gun would shoot me for having Actually, it. you can. Uranium ore is really easy. That's another thing I could have brought over. I have a piece of uranium ore. That is, you are allowed to get. You we can found order, you can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it on Amazon. That's Absolutely. right. Remember, yeah, yeah, we did that thing yeah. where you could buy it. Yeah, we yeah and it's On cool. the Patreon, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's got, it's got like a uh, little green flecks and stuff like that. Um, that that's actually, uh, that's dense uranium ore, but there's uranium in your backyard. So it's, it's not dangerous it's just, to the touch or anything like that. Uh, it's mildly dangerous, uh, but but that's but that's not. <laughs> well, being, it's kind of like when you see those signs. I'm, and I'm really trying kind of, to sell this stuff. <laughs> for you. Know, well, okay, but but hear me out. It's dangerous because your backyard is slightly dangerous in that yeah. there's radiation everywhere. It's no more dangerous than walking in your backyard, and you're already doing that. I think so. Yeah, this is L.A. So who was, who was the first person to dig up a rock of uranium and just go? Oh, I reckon this could do something. Uh, I'm supposed to know that uh, this is one of these things I'm supposed to know. A famous scientist, he put uranium on a piece of film, and that's how they discovered uh, radioactivity, actually. was uh, What movie was it? <laughs> it wasn't Martin even a movie. Heinrich Klaproth, right? Uh, that sounds right. Yeah. Uh, I might have been right with 1789, Austria, 1789, a German chemist. I might have been and right he, with he Austria. He just discovered that something was flying out of the uranium ore. He didn't know what, and it turns out that was radioactive particles. Way uh, weaker than in a plant, though. So just uranium ore is very weakly radioactive. And This guy discovered you know, on x-rays, Wilhelm Rotgen. Yeah. I don't know. Rotogen, yeah. Rotogen, uh, so, yeah. I mean, uh, just just so you know, even bananas are radioactive. When you eat a banana, there's uh, radioactive He hates potassium. bananas. Don't give him another reason to hate bananas. I knew they were troublesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fucking shit stirs bananas. The, 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 the thing about bananas is most arrogant fruit you've ever fucking... <laughs> Arrogant? Arrogant, <laughs> arrogant fucking <laughs> explain God, it, the uh, fruit's not arrogant they're, they're, no yeah. the people who eat them are fucking up themselves I love bananas. when <laughs> someone cracks open a banana just in public with you very rare you see someone pull an apple out on a plane and just <laughs> like that right <laughs> very rare the banana, oh, it gets a free pass and it, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and it leaves this fucking peel and they hold it and then they just any other wrapper you wouldn't just dump on your tray in front of you <laughs> Put it in the front seat or something away from vision, but they proudly go, I'm a fruit eater. <laughs> and they, they fucking like, it's just, anyone who eats a banana in public is a dead set cunt they are. It's, it's, it's like from the peel, from the peel. If you eat like a banoffee pie, I'm all for that. Have your fun, right? You slice up a bit in your cereal. But if you hold that fucking peel <laughs> on public transport, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> I've seen a person in real life slip on a banana peel, and I did not think that that was a real oh, thing. Oh, no, it would be slippery. It's, I could not believe it. My friend Colleen and I were in the car. We were coming out of a parking garage. I see the banana peel. This guy's carrying multiple shopping bags. And I was like, and I was joking around. I was like, oh, oh you better not slip on the banana. It fucking slipped. And I was like, I was so glad she was there because I was like, nobody would ever believe this. But full on. Yeah. Like, Legs out from under, yes, hoping. it was legs yes. out from but, underneath him, flying in the air. Didn't, they didn't put that into slapstick films out of nowhere. I, <laughs> I, I truly some, thought that that was just a made up thing. Some cunt saw another cunt slip on a fucking banana film, <laughs> <laughs> and, and went, "That's comedy. That's going to be it, all." It was my hilarious. Films. I will say that. Um, what? Did it make the noise? I made the noise. <laughs> <laughs> What is a control rod? Is it the glowy stick at the beginning of The Simpsons? Uh, it no, fucking is, guess. man. <laughs> the control... what's, what's the glowy stick at the beginning of The Simpsons? Uh, the Simpsons trying to scare you. When they when they do the thing, there's the conveyor belt, and you got your gloves, and you mm -hmm. go in, you're picking up things. Is that you right? Is that a real thing? That's a real thing. Yeah, those boxes exist. Uh, you don't usually use them at a plant, but I mean, you can. <laughs> yeah, they exist in a lab. But yeah. yeah. All right. So what yeah, is it? Mostly, it's getting more What's and more it? replaced by robots. So you yeah. more, it's like yeah, remote control. But what, what if the robots turn us and they crack the reactor? 
Well, that's where again the walk away safe would help because we wanted yeah, even if you, you have had another the fucking robot. robot doing it. You have another <laughs> robot doing it, and then your last bloke is the robot. I got a, I got this thing in my house, like like this control force it runs the music in my house. It breaks down all the time, and I have no one to call. There's one bloke, and he comes out about once a month and fixes it for me and says, "Oh, just so so the robots break, the robots break. You need one person at the end of the line. What if that cunt's a dead shit?" <laughs> then you're screwed. Yeah, two of them. <laughs> what, so what no, is, the, the, we haven't done the rods. Yeah, so what, is a, what is a control rod? So yeah. a control. Remember, I said that uh, um, the reaction has to be kind of carefully balanced. Yeah, a control rod is the thing that helps balance that. Yeah. Uh, in the old days, they used to sort of stick the rods up to try and control it. The downside about that though, is if you lose control of that, they fall out and the reaction goes up. Now they're much better about it. They have the control rods from the top, and a control rod is something that just uh, it absorbs neutrons. It just it just sucks that's up. That's what the I was going to ask you. So that's how they control the, the yeah. So it doesn't melt down. And what's so it's like is those fly tapes that people hang from their roof. Exactly. By the time yeah. you get those fly tapes, yeah. and they're a real American thing. You stick that sticky tape down. Uh, yeah, I don't even. Fucking know what you're just about. put up with the flies. Oh, you've yeah. never seen this? Yeah, it's a piece oh. of tape you hang from your ceiling and the flies It's, a, it's a bit of fucking sticky tape that comes from a roll. Watch some hoarders. There's always cunts that have put them up. And then they just, this tape that's hanging from your ceiling just gets covered in flies. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, it's the ugliest thing you can put up in your house. You might as well just have flies. Do we I've know, never no. seen this before in my life. You've that's, never seen no. this? No. I've never even heard of it. Do we know what a control rod's that's made of? That's crazy. Fly tape. They're made all, of all sorts of metals, but oh, boron Jesus. is a good example. I'll give a simple example. Sometimes they're made of... My uh, rod. Okay. Boron is a great okay. one because... Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> boron is, is called a, uh, is called a uh, neutron poison. <laughs> Pounds Actually, borat. Actually, uh, this, there's some great history here, which is that one of the things that the Germans got wrong is that when they were trying to make a reactor during World War II, one of the things they didn't realize is they they had to take boron out of the moderator, the graphite that was around the reactor. And because they didn't take it out, the reactor didn't work. And so they thought that nuclear power wouldn't work. Boron anyway. sounds like a supervillain who just tells you stories about people you haven't met. <laughs> <laughs> My neighbor's son's girlfriend. <laughs> uh, fuck, Boron's come over. Um, we talked about yellow cake and uranium comes from the ground. Jim got a point for that? I yeah. Guess. Yeah. It also comes from the ocean, but yeah. And the ocean, yeah, but not wrong. Yeah, from yeah. the ground, uh, man. Comes from How everywhere. do you find it? Do you find it with, a, with a diggy, diggy, diggy machine? Diggy, diggy, diggy. <laughs> no, you find it diggy, the, diggy, the diggy. old boring way. Uh, you see little green streaks and rocks usually is how you do it. Oh, so, uh, wait, so does it ever happen that, like, say, you're diamond mining and then you go, we've just found a shitload of uranium? That's probably happened, yeah. That's yeah, probably yeah. Happened. I mean, I don't know if enough about geology, but that probably. One nice thing about uranium ore is that it glows green, and this might be why they did this in The Simpsons, but it doesn't glow green because it's radioactive. It glows green because it's fluorescent. So it's no uh, different than any other fluorescent material. In fact, they used to make dishes and cups out of this stuff for decoration because people liked the the glowy green thing they're like oh i shine light on it, and it looks, yeah. but but then people realize like maybe we shouldn't be making dishware out of couldn't uranium. be healthy to eat off of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but also glow sticks man i always look at them used to give them to kids i feel like that's filled with shit right i don't think it's uranium it's something else you have to crack it and then it goes yeah uh, well so enriched uranium is um is needed that's what you need for nuclear yeah power. that's right so uranium just the way it is by itself is will not produce a nuclear reaction it won't make a bomb it won't make a power plant you have to enrich it now the amount you have to enrich to make a bomb is much higher than the amount you have to make a uh, reactor so for a reactor you just need a few percent more so what you there's two isotopes in nature so they have a different number of neutrons but they're chemically the same so they're both uranium but uh, uranium-235 is what you want for a reactor. Most uranium is 238. Oh, I've uh, always used 238. <laughs> <laughs> That's your problem. 235. <laughs> so a, a big part of the effort, you know, the Manhattan Project to make the first nuclear weapons was to do this enrichment, to get to, to do enough of it to, to actually make the, the, the part that can engage in fission very quickly. So when you say we could power a car that goes across the country, have we got cars? Well, you wouldn't power it that way directly. You, for example, you can have an electric car. A test it would power a Tesla if you charge. Right, up a but Tesla. can I? 
do, would I, I have to go to the uranium station to fill it up, or could I have like a little no, thing just, burning you, in my car? Just, and no, you would just uh, they, they used to want to do that back in the fifties, but they gave so up. So you on just that, you just have a, a nuclear power plant that power would power make plant? the electricity to charge your car, but that's all that you would need to do that. Yes, uh, you want a nuclear car. But I've been saying this for you. I have an invention. I'm mm -hmm. the ideas man. I need other people to come up with the science. This might be where you come in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I my invention is the battery that doesn't run out. Okay. Yeah. All right. The battery, on, Kevin. The, yeah, the battery that doesn't run out. Uh, you do that, man. We're going to make a few shekels, man. <laughs> I tell you, the battery that doesn't run out, it's a winner of an idea. That's a great idea. And there was one of the questions about that. You didn't answer it, right? But you, yeah, that was, what the, was the question. It was what's a uh, nuclear thermal? Oh, yeah. A radioisotope thermoelectric generator. Yes. Oh, they've already invented the battery yes, that doesn't run that out. That is a battery that doesn't run Can out. Can we put them in phones? <laughs> we can't, but they are on Mars what? rovers and they're on uh, ah. space satellites. So, for example, the Mars rover right now, it is powered there's by- There's no new, new ideas in this world. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's another world, actually, to be fair. But there's yeah. uh, other people working on more exciting ones. There's smaller <laughs> ones that use carbon. Uh, they actually- We wait, talked so about a, diamond. Wait, so that's a battery that doesn't run out? A radioisotope thermal electric well, it generator? it runs out, but it, it runs out after like 200 years. Oh, so. no, no. My one lasts forever. <laughs> okay. Well, there's 200 another- 200 years. There's another type they're working about, uh, a small radioactive- diamond battery where the radioactivity is inside of a diamond making it very hard to but diamonds are so rare I know. How would you find one? <laughs> the funny part is these would probably be cheaper than actual diamonds because they'd be like oh that's just a battery they're about, the they're about to, i ring. think they're very close to making synthetic diamonds that are exactly the same not like a cubic zirconian like exactly the same chemical yeah. makeup like they're, they're very close to making them in labs I don't don't I, those people just mysteriously disappear? That's I, what I thought made diamonds expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's like, well, well, I could just do this in my kitchen well, my, and then they're my, suddenly gone. Yeah, the next my day. wife was my <laughs> wife wouldn't have a blood diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking high mate. Thank God for Canada. I tell you, yeah. So <laughs> I got I got the diamond from Canada. Yeah, they just found the diamonds. They, right? they just found diamonds in the nineties for the yeah. first time. In the nineties in Canada. That means that the person who first found a diamond in Canada could have been listening to Nirvana <laughs> <laughs> or, or just going, I better get home and see what happens with Russ and Rachel. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like, like craziness. So waste, what happens with the waste generated from a nuclear power plant? And, and, you know, we talked about it. Uh, Jim says you put them in barrels um, and ding, and then it's yeah, hard so to get rid of. That's, he uh, said from one plant, it would be for a year would be size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Let's talk about that that's, a little bit. Uh, those that actually that was part of why I gave him a little bit higher score. That's pretty close oh, to the right answer. So they're not barrels. Although, I mean, they're basically barrels, but they're not like those metal barrels you say. They're, yeah, they're a more bad. special type of barrel called a dry cask. And they work really well. And you can literally hit one with a train and they will not break. They can also fall off a truck and they won't break. Why don't they make the train out of that material? I don't well, know. No, but then, <laughs> then if you hit it with a train, it'd be bad. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're, trying <laughs> <to get it. laughs> We're trying to protect the barrels, dude. Not the train. I don't know, but I'm just saying we make everything out of that. <laughs> So, well, uh, we make the whole world out of Nerf material. Yeah, uh, so you also got the amount <laughs> roughly right. It would fit into a car. Um, in fact, right now, the part you did got wrong, though, is we do not bury it underground. That was the original plan. That A lot of people didn't like that. There's a lot of people who said, not in my backyard, not in my mountain, whatever. And so uh, people, for a while, they were worried because they're like, I thought we wanted to bury this. The reality is uh, that one thing is it doesn't last as long as you hear. I mean, you hear like it lasts for tens of thousands of years. And while some isotopes do last for that long, the vast majority of it goes away in a few hundred years. And uh, so stop your moaning. Yes, yeah, so stop your moaning. <laughs> and in fact, there's so little of it that you don't actually have to put it anywhere. And nowadays people just store it in the parking lot of the power plant that's running. And there's so little oh. of it generated that it never takes up space at the I power see. plant. I see, so they'll store it there and then- they'll, they'll, Yeah, they the just have a big yeah, warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and also it's really clear, someday we'll be able to recycle it. I mean, we know how to do it now. It's just not cost effective reuse the uranium you use the there's there's still some uranium inside there's other isotopes that being used mm. in the medical industry there's all kinds of useful stuff in there it's not actually waste we call it waste but it's not waste it's actually very valuable what makes it frustrating is that it's mixed together and we don't have a cheap way of unmixing it Pretty at filter. the moment so i'm glad we're not bearing it because uh you know in in anywhere from 10 to uh 30 years 40 years 
we were going to be regularly recycling that. Oh, Robots that's, are that's help banging that. then. Because yeah. it was always the waste that everyone, they thought it was being poured into rivers and shit <clears> like that. Yeah. And so the fact that there's just a warehouse and it, how smart am I? Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. Mm. And then and the first. Get, one go. more fact I want to give you about sure, this. Yeah. Uh, all the radioactive material from power plants uh, generated in the last 20 years could fit into the end zone of a football field from the entire world. And just to give you, I I, just bury it in the end zone. Yeah, <laughs> and to give you a contrast of how how little space that is, we lose that much land from global warming and sea level rise roughly every hour. Wow. Yeah. So every mm. hour, that's how much the U.S. loses in coastline. Oh, just from I can see very... people in their cars. Your minds are blown right now. Your minds are blown. That wasn't you're... even a dinner party fact. Yeah, you're starting to think about fucking nuclear power in a different way. <laughs> and then who was the first to develop nuclear power and what was it used for? It was well, the, a, a not lot the of Turkish and DeLoreans, right? No, a lot of yeah. people uh, worked on it. So um, John Wheeler was the guy who first published the paper about fission chain reaction. Uh, he he's kind of cool in that he's friends with Kip Thorne, who was the producer of Interstellar, just won the oh, Nobel yeah. Prize. Oh, yeah. So, but he did the this movie. a long time ago. Yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> you should have him on the show. Oh no, no, I was thinking the movie Inner Space with uh, <laughs> Martin Sh- Martin Short. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, Interstellar. Interstellar. <laughs> Interstellar is all right, but the one with Martin Short where he, he Inner Space, yeah, yeah, where, where Dennis Quaid's inside his body in a little that tiny ship. Yeah. That's, that's a good movie, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's, where, that's where he met uh, the Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan, right. yeah. But the first person to build a uh, first reactor was um, Enrico Fermi, who fled uh, Italy during uh, right before World War II and came to the U.S. and what was that? Did I say here. Italy? Did I say Italy? He said Turkey. I said Italy. He said DeLoreans. And he wouldn't have been yeah. able to do that without the help of, of the Turks. <laughs> Actually, you did uh, say famous. you did say the Turkish um, people think it's Italy, but the Turkish never get credit. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was in America though. Right, uh, the the first yeah, power plant guys, and the first uh, you guys reactor. did everything. Yeah. everything. <laughs> the, fir- the first power plant was, I believe, 1955, and it was called the Fermi One, named after the fact that Fermi made the first reactor. And where was that in America? Where was that? Uh, it was. Uh, well, I have a party fact about that. So okay, we'll do that later. That. Yeah. Okay, and then, um, and uh, how many nuclear power plants are there in the world? There's two hundred. Uh, last I checked, which was last year, <laughs> is uh, four hundred forty. I think is four hundred forty. And how much of the world's power supply is that? Fifteen uh, percent. It's about yeah, ten and fifteen percent. All right, you got that, Jim. There, advanced nuclear. What is that? Ah, my favorite. Okay, advanced nuclear is generation four. So I talked about the Gen one reactors. Four Gen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is this is, with, is everything we learned from every previous accident, and also a lot of stuff we wanted to do a long time ago. Some of the ideas are actually old. They just we didn't have the technology to do it cost effectively. Now we do. Computers help with that. All sorts of stuff. Lots of years of research. Um, one of the most exciting things about advanced nuclear is that um, first of all, almost all the fuel is used from recycled. Uh, downgraded warheads. So that's one thing that's really exciting. Candy? Is, no, not the candy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. It's the old missiles. <laughs> yeah. Actually, like uh, Cold War era enriched uranium, but then we de enrich it back down. That's that's how much uranium there is in the world. Is that we actually have extra that we need to. Like, uh, so those, those missiles, those Cold War missiles, they're not even usable. They have no, to, no, like, they took the material out. Some of it's from Russia that they gave yeah. us at the end of the Cold War, believe it or not. Yeah. Some of it's from Mars. A lot of it, peace agreements, stuff like that. And it's just been, like you said, sitting in a warehouse. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so we're not even needing to mine most of this. They also, the really exciting part, though, is that uh, certain types of advanced reactors cannot melt down. It's not just that they're walk away safe. They literally, the fuel has been redesigned. There's a new kind of fuel called triso fuel which cannot melt down, meaning that it can go up to all the way to 2000 degrees uh, and it will not break open. And it has a little case around each pellet of uranium that prevents the release of any fissionable material. So even not only can they not melt down, they also are would have a very hard time releasing anything even outside of that containment vessel. They wouldn't even release it into the room of the containment vessel. So, And this is now or this is the future? This is being made right now. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And this has been, this is like 20 years of work, lots of government investment, lots of scientists spending a lot of time on it. Could they make airplanes power, power airplanes with this too? They can, but not directly, but you can use, yeah. I'm glad you asked because one of the things you can do is you can use advanced nuclear to do things more sophisticated than just making electricity, including yeah. making things like jet fuel. Yeah. Cause I look, and I, I don't think like, I know that 
nuclear is, I believe it's cleaner, obviously, than coal, oil, things like that. I don't think anything's perfect as far as power. I mean, we have so many humans on the planet. I mean, even solar and wind and stuff like that has drawbacks and things like that. But I think that we can tend to go towards things that are cleaner and safer and things like that. But I always look at planes and I'm like, what are we going to do about planes? Mm-hmm. Because we're all flying planes or whatever, and you still need this the jet fuel that we use now that and comes that, from oil. That, that causes just as much as cars. Yeah, yeah and it's so <laughs> much. Too. And yeah. I love flying, so yeah. I don't want to give that up. I'm I'm worried somebody's just like, planes nuclear, are banned. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. but I, I want to go to Fiji. Wait, so there's a type of <laughs> fuel that can be made possibly from Yes, yes. Imagine can... if they said no one's ever allowed to fly ever again and it'll be starting next week. How many people would move? <laughs> oh my god. How many, how, many, how many people would move? Go, this is my last chance to get out of wherever the fuck I you am. Take a, you could take a boat. Yeah, my parents went to London in the 60s. How long did it take? Like three weeks or something? Three weeks. Fuck on a yeah. boat without a stop. The uh, the, Ariana, the Ariana boat, right? Which was a P&O boat. For, yeah. And, and they, they left from Sydney and then they landed in fucking, I believe, Portsmouth. Yeah. After three weeks. And uh, my mum reckons she got off the boat and it was wet and it was fucking Portsmouth. Hello, the people of Portsmouth. <laughs> but it's a rough town, right? And she went, why the fuck did I she get gets, on this gets boat? Right back on the boat. Because <laughs> you've, still, you've still got a two-hour drive to an hour and a half drive to London from there. So it seemed very daunting when they got there. But like how shit – the Australian <clears throat> cricket team used to play England in cricket matches – and they used to like in the in the fifties and stuff. Used to have like, and now boys are off to play those palms in England. Good luck, boys. Here they are on the boat, and you know that type of stuff. It's like fuck, man. These weren't like cruise liners with buffets. You were sleeping in. Bunk I know beds we're bitching shit. about like you got to fly four hours. Fuck oh, again. I would not be gigging in Asia. This yeah. December. You wouldn't be gigging. If, we if we were just on boat technology. <laughs> you wouldn't be gigging in Columbus, Ohio. No. <laughs> Asia. Like I know you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'd see you in Bakersfield and that's it. That's it. I'd, I'd, be, like, I'd be like, I'm doing a world tour. See you soon, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So advanced nuclear, is it, uh, it feels like they need a marketing plan. Yeah, the government's not so great at that. Um, yeah. is the, there's is companies the, working on it, though. We'll, is the we'll, bomb part of the problem, the nuclear bombs? It and used, how does a nuclear bomb work? It definitely used to because uh, for two reasons. One, people associated them in their head. They were trying to avoid nuclear war. Well, we say we have um, nukes. Like, it's just we have even like- Yeah, so for example, like I said, Italy doesn't have nuclear power plants. Part of that is because they, they amended their constitution and said, we're going to be a nuclear-free country, but they banned both. You know, they could have picked one. They could have said we're not going to have nuclear weapons, but instead they picked both. But one of the other nice things about advanced nuclear is that it decreases one of the things that's always been a concern of early nuclear power, which is proliferation, meaning the reactor proliferation is because it proliferates warheads. That's where the term comes from. That one of the things that people want to avoid is that just because you're in control of a reactor, they don't want it to be then easy to, to make a bomb from that. So advanced reactors, uh, advanced nuclear, are it's much, much harder for someone to sneak a bomb out of it, you know, so things like uh, the tech, you know, the fuel is much harder to turn into what could be used for a weapon. It's not impossible, but it's much harder. And then, even more importantly, uh, investor, uh, you know, um, in people coming to inspect it, inspectors, world inspectors can't be tricked, and that's happened before in the past. <laughs> so no, older this- reactors, people <laughs> literally snuck weapons grade plutonium out of the reactor without inspectors even noticing. So it's th- th- really important to make sure that we can't do that yeah. anymore. So, so uh, this is probably this isn't your topic, but it's insane. So we've had two nuclear bombs dropped in the world, right? How many of them have we got just kicking around that we haven't used? Well, there's the Wikipedia answer, and then there's the real answer. And the Wikipedia answer is, I think we have about two thousand warheads ac- ready to go in the U.S. About two thousand in Russia. But I will just uh, invite you to to wonder if Wikipedia actually has like access to to clearance and, yeah, and no. if everything that <laughs> oh, you think there's everything more. you've always no, been told. A Wait, you're saying <laughs> Wikipedia isn't a thousand percent accurate? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I, I, fucking I, wild. Wikipedia is. <laughs> well, Jim's from Perth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, his, no, his last yeah. name isn't even spelled right in oh, part no, of his it, Wikipedia. It, 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 it said he was from Perth for years. Uh-huh. And so when we were working on the Jim Jeffrey show, I wrote to them and I said, uh, I, I, I tried to fix it for you. And then I wrote to him and said, he's from Sydney. And they asked for like proof. And I said, well, I'm sitting next to him. There's, <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a good line in, in uh, the office where Michael Scott's looking at Wikipedia and he goes, Wikipedia, anyone in the world 
you can put information on here. Anyone. So you know you're getting the best stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, now is the part. Now it's time for dinner party facts. You're already given us at least a couple, but um, it's part of our show. Expert gives us something obscure, interesting. It blows our audience mind. You already, already gave us. I don't even mean mind blown. Yeah, about me too. Time. This it's is. like I've got nukes going on in my head. Yeah. Man. <laughs> right. yep. You got another one? Also, yeah, the, got... back to the 2000 in America. What, what's our plan with those? <laughs> don't you need just like five just to go, we're going to fucking bury that country. Five will do it. Well, they're little though. They used to be big. Now they're little. The same, same size as that jar. Nukes. Yeah, same size as that jar, yeah. Size All of right, table, so they maybe. wouldn't blow up a whole city with one. Yeah, no, that's not the plan anymore. Oh, At least that's the plan that I know about. <laughs> so you go boom, 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 boom. Yeah, they're more for like taking out a, a an army unit or so. I because they still test them. They still test them. You see those ones like that's the whole thing. We don't want to get rid well, of North Korea. Oh, just get, tested them. They, well, they tested them in the outback of Australia. And it's well, like well, we're not supposed to test them. <laughs> no, the Fr the, the French were testing some uh, in Australia. Yeah. Well, the the US and Russia has not. Yeah, we're not testing them. North Korea because been of the comprehensive. The I, I might be wrong and write in and correct me, but I, I believe maybe twenty years ago the French were testing them in the yes, outback of twenty years. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The French were testing them in the outback of Australia, and it was like. Uh, the, the French Prime Minister uh, protesting everything. He goes, we have a saying in France, uh, too much of something is nothing, right? Which is good. It's like when you get abused on the internet so much that this becomes like, fuck yeah. that. One <laughs> comment will kill you, but 50 won't. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, it's like, uh, he goes, too much is uh, nothing. So it's sort of work. People just stop protesting about it. <laughs> yeah. All right, what do you got? One more dinner party. Okay, back. so I said I was going to get back to this. Um, yes, where the first nuclear reactor was made. Uh, this is pretty funny. It was actually made under the bleachers of a football stadium in, at Chicago University. <laughs> in, in, nice. In 1941. <laughs> Go the three eyes. Yeah. <laughs> in 19, oh, yeah, 19, what was it again? 19, 1941. Yeah. They just oh, the, it's not bad, 1940. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad. Did they yeah. tell the students? No, they didn't tell the students. <laughs> I don't like, think hey, it's so. really warm in this section. <laughs> right, so, so, so did you need a plant to make the bomb that went on Hiroshima? Or? That one was just to demonstrate that it was possible, but it was part of the Manhattan Project that that Einstein had helped got, get funded. Um, and this is kind of hilarious. Uh, one of the big uh, things that Fermi needed was about $6,000 to buy the graphite moderator for that reactor. Oh, wow. Why the first one needed $6,000 and that changed the course of history? I don't know, but <laughs> that's... Oh, Jeez. well, um, Kev, Dr. Kevin Peter Hickerson, thank you for being here again on Twitter and Instagram. You can find him at KP Hickerson uh, and you can listen to his podcast. Surely you're joking uh, that he hosts it's a science and comedy podcast that he created with Jimmy O. Yang featuring Nobel Prize winner, scientists and comedians. Thank you for being here again, um, Jim. Yeah, thank you for being on the podcast. Thanks again, for having doctor. me. Better I appreciate blast. that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever at a uh, party and someone comes up to you and goes, nuclear power isn't safe, you go boom, and then go, I don't know about that, and walk away. <laughs> no boom boom. Yeah, no boom boom. <laughs> You're not Australian.